Hello. Do you want to be in this video? Is my face acceptable smell? Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Ma says welcome back when he's finished sniffing my mouth. This is how he tells what I've been eating and if he's had any or not. Um, oh, that's a pretty look. That's a pretty look. Oh, it's lovely, darling. I like what you've done with your fringe. This video is something very different from what I've normally done. Oh, there's gonna be hair in my coffee. So this is all about social media, the crazy world. There's gonna be three episodes, breaking them all up into different sort of topics. So if you're not interested in one, you don't have to watch them all. This video, I'll be going through all things influencer. What it is, why it's a thing, good and the bad, responsibilities, everything to do with that whole job. Video two, will be on how to grow your Instagram, how to get followers, get better engagement, and why is my page going nowhere, things like that. And then the third and final video will be how to make money, how to earn a living, and the ins and outs of how everything works. Who actually pays you? Do, do you get a check in the mail? Like what's the actual go? Whew. So, grab a beverage. This is very cold. It's been sitting here a while while I settle this up. This is my take on things and that's it so you know. Also I'm trialing a new lens and it has a very loud focus motor. I don't know if that's what it's called but it's for photos not videos so when I do this it makes that fun noise. Uh, so if you hear that that's what that is. But anyway let's get into the video. I'm gonna drink my cold coffee. So video one, all about influencers. <sighs> there is so much bad and just horrible sort of reputation around the word influencer and what they are. So I'm gonna try and break through that. You hear a lot of influencers saying they hate it and they hate being called it. I don't hate it. I just think there's some people that call themselves that that probably shouldn't and give it a bad name. The very definition of influencer is somebody who influences others, but in, I guess, a social media aspect, it's somebody that's established really high credibility in whatever field they are. So like or driving. They've grown a following around that interest and people trust them. Their word is very highly regarded. My mum is my influencer. She influences a lot of my decisions. You know you go to do something and then you hear that like, mum voice in your head and you're like oh nah prob's not gonna do that. Everyone around you influences your decision and you don't, might not even realize until much later. I've always said the reason I got into four driving was because of mates. They influenced me enough that I went from wanting a Ford car. I don't know if you've ever seen a Ford car. That's how, it, that's what it is, it's K-A. That was the car I wanted. And then I started hanging around people that went forward driving and suddenly I wanted a Ford drive. Influencing in everyday life is massive. When you go to school, you're influenced by your friends. And then when you go to a workplace, you might find yourself picking up words that people say or habits or, and whether you like being influenced or not, it's probably happening without you knowing it. The actual thing of influencing is not bad. Influencing in general got a bad name from people who aren't good influencers or aren't good at life in general and have just decided that they want to be an influencer and you don't really get to choose that. You get people who are messaging companies. I didn't think that it was this bad. I didn't think it was this bad in the forward driving industry, but after talking to so many companies, it's, it's a real thing. People genuinely are messaging businesses, asking for free stuff and offering promotion to get free stuff. That's crazy. I didn't realize, I thought it was, yeah, in the wider Instagram. I thought it was that, but it's very, very prevalent and real in the four drive world. And it blew my mind when I saw like some messages from the amount of people that just think because they've got, you know, 10,000 followers. And so that's where the bad name comes from. I have never messaged a company and asked for anything. I've never even messaged a page and asked them to share my stuff ever. I think there's a difference to when you sort of get to a high level of success that you could probably start doing that. 
I even think when you get to a certain level of success and you are making decent money and you have a really good audience that is valuable to a business, I still don't think that you should ask for free stuff, <laughs> pay for the product <laughs> and then offer, you know, to work together. Yeah, that's where the bad name comes from. Just people asking for free stuff or expecting free stuff. People who think when you get to a certain level of followers or something that you are entitled to free stuff. It's not, it's not how it works. Being an influencer online, I believe that you have to have a very high level of responsibility, especially if you're in a field, I guess, like myself, being in forward driving. Most people get into forward driving when they get their first car, so around 16 years old. That's probably the most influential time in someone's life. If I wasn't around the people I was around, I probably wouldn't even be in this industry. I probably wouldn't be a mechanic today. I have a lot of people who are young forward drivers following me. So I think there's a certain level of responsibility. You can't just have all these followers and then go and put a story up of you drink driving. And an influencer has this level of unspoken responsibility that you have to be a good influence. There is a handful of people that don't take it seriously and you see them not take it seriously and they spread hate and they spread terrible lessons. And it sucks because people are like, oh, it's my page, do what I want. And it's like, yeah, it is, make it private. Like there's people that wanna reap all the benefits of being an influencer, but they don't actually wanna uphold any of the responsibilities that should be put upon them. Like nobody's gonna come and arrest you, but you know, be a good person. Just say it, okay, all right, yeah, go. Cool. Another responsibility I think you have is to give out correct information or as correct your knowledge. I am very cautious about giving out advice online because at the end of the day, you really don't know the situation. But when it's something um, important or something that I think needs to be like addressed properly, my advice is to always go and see someone, like whether it's for mental health or whether it's for my car's making this funny noise and I don't know what it is. Sometimes you just have to know your limits of what put your hand on your heart and say is true and, and right. People giving out false information online is one of the biggest issues because when you build a following as an influencer, people blindly just trust everything you say. And the biggest thing I'm noticing at the moment in the four drive industry is people pretending their cars are legal. It's just, painful because you get people who then come to you and they're like oh no but such and such has this car and it's like yeah that car's not legal and they go no no but it passed inspection you're like trust me it did not pass inspection like the way that you see it online i've always been upfront about my car and everything that it has on it and i don't recommend illegal stuff to people um are trusted by their followers and sort of have a big name out there and they're just straight up lying or they're avoiding it. They're, they're finding every way to avoid answering the actual question. Uh, and I think that's sneaky and just, I don't know, it just seems untrustworthy. I'd like be honest, like we all know that you can't engineer a four inch unless it's pre-rego or SSA. Uh, so that, that's the biggest thing. Not everyone, just because they have a large following doesn't mean necessarily that you should take everything they say verbatim and trust them with your life and with your car and i think everyone should always be doing their own research but that's just the thing as, as an influencer you have that responsibility like don't lie don't be deceitful don't you know give out false information or you know make it make out like you've got something that you don't another thing that sort of you deal with being an influencer, I guess, is trolls. <laughs> Bullying and trolls. Growing up, I had a fairly okay childhood. Like I went to primary school, had no issues. The first high school I went to had like 300 people in a grade. And then I went to a private school. And between the two, I never had any issues. I didn't really experience any sort of bullying or anything like that. I've never exposed to horrible lengths that people go to in bullying. And then I joined social media and it was all revealed. All right, this, this is what everyone needs to know right now. Nobody cares when you're a nobody. Nobody cares. And when people care, they bully. 
not always, but bullies don't bully people unless they care. You have to have a certain level of care in order to have enough effort to bully someone. And when you're a nobody, nobody cares. So you don't get bullied. I didn't experience trolling until very recently when I had you know, a little old Instagram that nobody really knew about and, you know, only like people with 75 sort of knew who I was. I was a girl with 75 that said mine, not his. And I used to post a lot more, a lot more stuff that would push more buttons nowadays. But nobody cared back then because I was a nobody. And now people have an issue because I am not a nobody and I have this large presence and people see that as a way to sort of tear it down. I don't have time enough in my day to comment good things to people. It blows my mind that people have all this time to comment bad stuff. It affected me a lot at the start and I'm someone who is quiet and reserved in, you know, day-to-day -day social life. I took it all to heart and I want everyone to like me. I'm one of those people. Saying horrible stuff about you, it's kind of hard not to be like, why do you feel this way? Why do you hate me so much? Like, what have I done? Like, I must be doing something wrong. It took a long time for me to be like, it's just how it is. You can't make everybody like you. And the sad thing is, your haters are indeed your biggest fans. I found this out by blocking people and they continue to make troll posts using my photos, which means one or two things. They either have a friend who they're like, hey, can you screenshot this and send it to me so I can make this troll post? Or they've made fake accounts, which is most likely. So much effort. You have to make another email account. I had to make another email for my dog's Instagram. These people go and make email addresses for fake accounts to make fake Instagram to follow me to steal my photos. That is so much effort. They will be the first person to see all your posts. <laughs> so now it's just funny. Now every time we see a post, I share it with all my mates. We all laugh, we have a good giggle because I have people surrounding me that do support me and do like me and that's all that really matters at the end of the day. How to deal with them? I found that most people who bully and troll and say hateful things online have something going on in their life. Everyone should know this themselves. When you're like genuinely happy and you're excited and you've got something going on and your relationship's good and your work's good and everything's good in life, you ain't going around hating people. <laughs> Cause happy people do not hate. If you're sad or something's not going right um, or you're not getting the results you want or you know, you're insecure about a certain thing and then somebody goes and shoves what you're lacking in your face, it's very easy to hate. It's very easy to go, why don't I have that? Why does she get that? Like it's unfair. And, and then that just builds hate. And then they start hating and then they start picking apart all the things to sort of discredit you and it makes them feel better. But yeah, normally people who bully are unhappy in some aspect and they won't admit it to you. They won't go, yeah, no, you're right. I'm, I'm having a hard time at work and I'm sorry for that comment. It just brought up a lot of stuff. No one's going to say that. So you can't win. Don't try and win against them. And you just sort of have to try and look at it. Do, that's what you needed to do. Okay, cool. I'm just gonna delete this comment because it doesn't need to be here, but try and keep that in the back of your head. Don't exaggerate the situation and bully them back. Don't go down to their level, I guess. At the end of the day, if that person's having a shit time, you don't need to go and make it worse. Better ways to deal with it. And that is simply to delete and block. Uh, and people get real shitty about that. And it's like real shitty. My page at the end of the day and you should never feel hated or anything because of people you've removed off your page. They're bringing you down if it's affecting your work or your mental capacity. Um, if it's just not positive, then you are well within your rights to delete and block that person. Um, I don't want those kind of people to have access to my content. Because at the end of the day, there's people out there who just love the drama. They love the bullies. They love to see people getting bullied and it's that's sad and they're, those people who just stand by and watch it all happen and like subscribe to that are kind of worse than the bullies themselves to sort of stand by and be okay with somebody outright getting bullied. And I put all my effort into helping my followers and if these people are supporting my trolls, then that's kind of counterproductive. <laughs>
Uh, no. I post a lot of things I know don't get views and like attraction and things like that. So when I post things that are like not my car um, or it's my car, but it's like I'm not in the photo and it's just a boring photo of my car out somewhere. But sometimes I just want to post a photo of my car and it looks good and I like it and that's... No, I wouldn't change. That's silly. You can't change your content just for views. Don't, don't resort to that level. Oh, how does it affect your personal life? Uh, it affects your personal life. 100% affects your personal life. It might not in the beginning, like mine didn't in the beginning. Now it has become sort of a side job. Things have to happen. Like I do have to reply to messages and I do have to be on there some period of time and I do have to be making constant content to put up. There is a level that it would affect your, your private life because if you went from not ever being on social media to being on there every day, it's going to have an effect. How do I maintain a level of privacy? I only will share what I would share with someone in person. So sometimes I'll go into a bit more serious topics and things that probably deeper and probably, you know, more end of the night after some drinks conversation. But generally most of what I share is what I would share with somebody in person. I'm not somebody who goes up and tells everyone my life. Somebody asks, I will usually share. Like I'm not like real private. It's just, I'm not in your face. Here, know all of my crap. <laughs> I've never really shared heaps of my relationships because I'm a private person in that way in real life. I don't go around flaunting my relationships um, out in public or anything like that. So it's, do you think social media is good for us or not? I think it is good. I think there is more good in it than bad. The good being that there's so many ideas and things to see and absorb and take in that if you didn't have social media, you would never get to experience, I guess. And all these people that you can connect with instantly, you wouldn't have. The bad, obviously, I think if you get caught up in it, it can, you know, ruin your actual life when you become absorbed with online. Online, to me, is temporary because all that has to happen is the internet to go down. But it is good while it's here for information use it for what it's good for and try not to get sucked up in the bad of it. So I think all the other questions will relate more to the next video. So I will leave them for then. I will be covering how to grow your Instagram and all things like that. You know, timing a post, sustainability, how to get people to follow you, your car and, and things like I'll cover all that in the next video. But if you have any questions about influencing social media in general, bullying or how to handle it or anything like that, let me know below and I will get back to you. Yeah, if you like these videos and you wanna see more, like. Otherwise, I'll see you in my next video.